So first question comes from Brendan Talks Gaming, and he asks, what are y'all's thoughts on buying used gear? Buying used gear. I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. I think used gear holds up pretty well in the drum world. Normally, it's relative to like to touring and like is the gear been transported like drums don't really get that beat up from playing them because you don't hit the wood or the hardware that much you know in my experience it's pretty easy to keep gear in mint condition because I don't tour and because I don't gig and my gear is not very mobile but there are some things you know if you get a kit that's been on tours that's going to be a kit that's beat up a little bit more climate changes a lot and I don't mean like the topic of climate change I mean um a kit that is brought into different climates very often. That sort of thing worries me a little bit when it comes to any like uh, artisan woods. Like I, I like things that are kept in an air conditioned environment all the time. So I would say the owner and sort of their lifestyle as a musician, that would be the big factor when you're buying any type of used gear. Like, did you tour with this? Has this been all over town? Has it been in smoky bars? Has it sat in the sun because you played a gig in a parking lot? Like those are the variables you have to, to worry about. Um, and of course, maintenance when it comes to hardware and pedals and things like that. Um, you certainly have to be careful of rust or things that haven't been oiled or maintained. So I would say, and I look at like buying cars the same way as this. If you get the good story and a good vibe from the seller, then buying something used is a lot less scary. Like when I buy a vehicle and someone can't tell me anything about it, they don't know where it came from, where the maintenance was done, and there's no story, that's a little bit scarier. I'd rather take a risk on somebody who has the backstory of this piece of gear. So if you got a guy selling a snare or a pedal or uh, a used symbol, and he says, I bought it here, I did this with it, um, here's what I loved about it, and then here's why I'm selling it. All that stuff to me um, helps make the purchase a lot a lot smoother, and it just gives me a peace of mind when I'm buying used gear. Um, I think, yeah, the only thing to be careful of, I guess, would be symbols. Used symbols can get a little bit weird because Right, like what does a symbol look like right before it's about to crack? It looks exactly like a normal symbol, right? So if you can get the story of the piece of gear, I think that's a much smarter way to approach buying used gear in general. But uh, with shells, I mean, it's it's a pretty safe bet as long as you know the seller, right? Yeah. You're selling a kit right now, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you can put fresh heads on anything and make it sound great. And yeah. now more than ever, help out musicians. if They're trying to sell some stuff for money. Give them some money. Yeah. This is not a self-plug for me to sell my kit. <laughs> He's just trying to but, sell a kit. <laughs> but, you know, if uh, <laughs> a lot of people aren't gigging, a lot of people are trying to get rid of the stuff that they thought they needed and they don't. Uh, people are realizing the essential yeah. parts of being a musician. And if it's holding on to three kits, you know, yeah, maybe you downsizing. only need one. So buy yeah. used for sure. Sure. I'll give you another weird, weird used story. This happened when I worked at Sam Ash probably 10 years ago or so. We... Had somebody come in. I can't remember the brand, but it was like a, I want to say it was a, it was labeled a Tama. And we were trying to figure out what kind of Tama. And I think we determined that it was a Superstar Hyperdrive, which was actually a kit that I had years and years ago. I had a white one. And we're looking at it, but like something was weird. There was like a mismatched lug and there was some print on the inside that didn't look like it was from Tama. And we found that this person had shaved the drums down, cut them to the Hyperdrive sizes and gotten hardware off a hyperdrive kit and the badges and like made like a counterfeit drum set and it almost tricked us even working at Sam Ash it took us like 20 minutes to be like why like what year was this made and like like trying to figure all that out and it was legitimately like a counterfeit kit um, I've never seen that before but this was a weird thing that happened to us we almost gave them like 400 bucks on a trade in <laughs> for some like total piece of junk kit you know it's, it's weird weird i don't know i don't know why you would exhaust all that effort in order to make four hundred dollars like that seems like too much you it's know, a lot of work you would of think it. just if you had all the work to be able to make a counterfeit kit why aren't you working hard enough to afford an actual kit yeah make, uh, all right yeah i think that happens <laughs> in the guitar world much more counterfeit guitars is definitely a thing but it's probably a little easier counterfeit drum set is too big to deal with all of that that's probably not a thing yeah you know anyway <laughs> uh, weird story